All right, time for that spring guide thing I talked about during the Q&A. Uh, I'll be going through this really quickly because I want to make this like two videos at most, so I got to get through these quickly. Basically, I'm just going to say the title, I'm going to read the synopsis, and I'm just going to say my quick thoughts on it, whether I'm going to watch it or not, and then why. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. Uh, keep in mind, obviously, my guesses can be wrong. Uh, I'm just going off synopses. They could actually turn out to be very good shows for all I know. This is just how I decide what I'm going to watch. Um, but I've actually missed some pretty good shows sometimes just going off of this. Uh, if I have any background information on the show, I can bring that up. Hopefully, I can, uh, can tell you guys about some shows you might want to see if you didn't know about it otherwise. Um, but otherwise, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna get started, so let's get down to pronouncing some titles really fucking badly. Alright, first up is, uh, Kara the Animation. It's... I'm not even gonna read the synopsis. It's apparently there's some K-pop group, it's some anime based on them. I don't really give a shit, I don't listen to K-pop. I mean, who knows, it could be a pretty good story, but usually these kind of things just end up being fan service for the fans of the show. So I don't really care. Um, next one is... Otana Joshi no Anime Time. I wish these titles were translated, but <laughs> oh well. Uh, anyways, a program to present stories for women. Its first installment deals with a woman returning from America to her hometown for the first time in five years with her four-year-old son and pondering what could have been and the man she could have been with. I sure hope you guys can read these synopses when I edit the video because I'm reading them really fast. Um... This is, doesn't really interest me either. When, when you kind of specify that something is for a specific gender, that's kind of a bad sign, because you should really make shows to, to, you know, cater to, you know, both genders. And if it really is that gender-specific about stuff, I'm not going to get it, because I'm not the target audience. So, that'll be another pass on me. Uh, next is RDG Red Data Girl. The story revolves around Izumuku a girl raised within the confines of Tamakura Shrine, one of the Kumano shrines that are part of the World Heritage Site. However, after Izumiko spent practically her entire life at Kumano until middle school, it was decided that she and her childhood friend Miyuki would enroll in something something in Tokyo on a school trip to Tokyo. A mysterious entity known as someone appears and some terrible incident happens. Her family creates a great secret that someone's about to learn. Um, the synopsis sounds pretty crazy, but it's probably one of those things that'll end up being very, very underwhelming. Uh, I'll give it the three episode test though, just to see, just in case. Um, uh, it'll probably reveal what this incident is and what the secret is within the first three episodes, because that's generally how it works. So I'll give it the three episode test, but right now I can't decide whether I'm really going to enjoy it or not. I'm willing to give it the chance to, sh to prove me wrong though. Because on initial instinct, I think it actually might not be too great. But anyways, next show. Um, oh god, more episodes of Girls in Panzer. I didn't watch it, I don't get the big craze about it, no, I'm not gonna watch it. Okay, maybe I'll eventually watch it, but I don't get the craze, and I'm not watching it right now. <laughs> so, nothing for me. Um, uh, Kido's, yeah, Gundam Seed Destiny. Uh, it's a remaster, apparently, of Gundam Seed Destiny. I don't even read the synopsis, the title says everything. Um, I didn't watch Gundam Seed Destiny the first time, and apparently a lot of Gundam fans say Gundam Seed is the worst one. <laughs> so, yet another reason not to watch it. Uh, so that'll be another pass. Next, Date Alive. In the story, a boy named Sido Shido, I guess it's pronounced with an S-H even though it doesn't have it in the title, or in his name, whatever. Izuka meets a spirit girl who has been rejected by a devastated world. The girl, who Shido names Toka, happens to have wiped out much of humanity in 30, humanity 30 years ago, and now she is back. The only way to stop her is to date her. This sounds really fucking stupid, uh, but it could actually be pretty funny. Uh, this is probably another one that'll put under the three episode test. This is generally what I do for most comedies because there's so many different types of comedy and different audiences for those different types of comedy that you never really know if one's going to stick with you well or not. So basically, I, I usually give every comedy the benefit of the doubt and give them a few episodes to show me what their kind of repertoire of jokes are. So synopsis sounds dumb. It could be some stupid fan service bullcrab, but it also sounds like it's actually supposed to be a comedy. So I'll give it a chance and see if it's funny or not. Next is tr Train Heroes, which looks fucking amazing! Okay, I don't know. Um, it, it's apparently a rescue team, and it's basically Transformers, but they're like public service vehicles. I don't know. It sounds pretty fucking awesome, but I bet no one's going to translate it, so I can't watch it. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> if someone translate this, if someone translate this, I will watch it. I'll tell you right now. I will do it. <laughs> But the thing is, no one's going to do it. Watch someone end up doing it. That'd actually be pretty amazing. 
Anyways, next show. Uh, Didi Hokuto no Ken. I don't even read, need to read the synopsis for this one. This is basically some parody of Fist of the North Star where all the characters are in modern Tokyo. I saw the trailer for it. The comedy looks really fucking stupid. Um, so, generally, I, I, I saw how the jokes kind of work. It's not even a direct... It doesn't seem like a direct parody of Fist of the North Star either. It seems like they just, like, chibified them and then they make really stupid facial expressions and that's the joke, I guess. I could be wrong, but that's what the trailer showed to me, and that I didn't really care when I saw it. So, that'll be a pass on me. Uh, next is... Oh, God, no, please, next. Um, Kuro Majo-san Gatoru second season. Oh, is it second season? I didn't watch the first season, so I don't care. <laughs> if you watched the first season of this and you liked it, there you go, you got the second season. But I didn't watch the first season, so that's another pass for me. Next is Gakatsu second season, which is awesome! Oh, I should read the synopsis first. Sequel to the Gakatsu series. The story centers on a junior high school class where students discuss strange topics as part of their classroom activities. If you watched my top 10 anime of 2012 video, you know this made the list. Yeah, due to its quirky humor, it's only like five minute episode length. And, well, that was it. Quirky humor and five minute episode length. <laughs> if, if quirky humor and like random like leaps of logic are your kind of ideas of, what, of what's humorous, then there you go. There's the first season of Gakatsu to go off of if you want to find that and watch that. See if you like it and think it's funny. Uh, I thought it was funny. I felt like if it was a full-sized show, like 24 minutes, it would have gotten kind of boring to me, but because it was only five minutes long, it kept the comedy, you know, compact and tight and all that jazz, so it was able to, to absorb it a little bit easier, and I felt like that actually saved the show being only five minutes. But anyways, I didn't even know they were making a second season. They just updated this chart not long ago, so f hell yes! Kakatsu second season. That'll be great. Uh, next show. Dan Borrowed Senki Wars. Oh, cool, it's a sequel. Another one I don't have to talk about. I didn't watch the first one. Next! Uh, Carnival. Ooh, this looks colorful. Oh my god, that text is small shit. Um, Nai searches for someone important to him with only an abandoned bracelet as a clue. Kareki steals and pickpockets to get by from day to day. The two meet in a strange mansion where they are set up and soon become wanted criminals by military security operatives. When Nai and Genki find themselves desperate in a hopeless predicament, they encounter none other than the country's most powerful defense organization, Circus. The Circus is a defense... What the fuck is going on in this synopsis? The circus is a defense organization that works for the government. They perform raids to capture criminals and solve crimes that the security force otherwise cannot handle. After the raids, they put on shows as an apology for scaring the citizens. <laughs> Their group consists of the strongest, most capable fighters that use a special type of bracelet known as circus ID to fight. Okay, this sounds convoluted as hell. <laughs> but who knows, it could be pretty interesting. And it looks colorful. I like colorful shows. But that's because I play a lot of games, and most recent games, you know, have the gray filter of death, and brown filter of death, and it's really boring. So I like colorful shows. So I'm willing to give Carnival a three-episode, you know, test to see if the it's if, if the plot's easier to, to digest than that synopsis lets on. Uh, and also because it, it, it looks pretty pretty. It it also looks like it's Bishojo kind of stuff. Like, like yeah, you could tell with a picture. But usually it doesn't bother me unless it's extremely blatant. Like, I watched K. I didn't mind. I didn't mind number six. Um, actually, the ending was kind of fucking annoying because it didn't make sense to happen. I didn't care because, whatever. <laughs> Not a conversation to have right now. Uh, next show. Dance I Bunri No Crime Edge. With this weird fucking title. The story revolves around Kiri Kaimura, a boy who lives... who who loves to cut girls' hair. He happens to meet Iwai Mushgang, a girl with long, beautiful hair who is known as the Queen of Hair. Her hair has been cursed to be forever uncuttable, but Kiri happens to have Dansai Bunri no Crime Edge, scissors that have the mystical ability to cut her cursed hair. Kiri finds her himself protecting Iwai from descendants of murderers wielding killing goods. That sounds stupid as hell. Actually, I know a little bit about this ahead of time. Uh, basically, that synopsis sounds like the greatest comedy in the universe because of how stupid it is. But um, the story is actually really like, like, like they play it really straight. Like if you've watched the trailer, it's like this serious fucking opera music as like they're doing this like random stuff, and it's like, why aren't they taking this like not seriously? I I don't know, but they take the plot really seriously for some reason, even though it sounds like they should take it like it's a joke. <laughs> Um, I'm willing to give it some episodes to see how it goes. Maybe it could be good. Maybe it'll be something I can laugh at. I don't know. All I know is the plot synopsis is really fucking stupid and, and also extremely convenient. <laughs> this girl just happens to have un uncuttable hair due to a curse. He just happens to have so that just happened to cut her hair. There just happened to be people after her. 
At best, maybe there's some good fight scenes. They mentioned other people with killing goods. I, apparently, there's actual fight scenes in this, which sounds really weird, but I don't know. Anyways, next show. Photocano. I don't even need to do the synopsis. This is basically one of those Erog games, or Erog, whatever. Um, you apparently take pictures of girls, and then they want to have sex with you. Because as everyone knows, that's exactly how it works in real life. Um, so yeah, this sounds really fucking stupid. I don't care. Next. Hataraku Mausama. In another dimension, the Devil King Sado is only one step away from conquering the world where he is when he is beaten by Hiro Amelia and forced to drift to the other world, modern day Tokyo. As conquering the world are the only skills the Devil King possesses and are obviously unnecessary in his new situation, he must work as a feeder to pay for his living expenses. Uh, I don't know any background information on this, but if I recall from what other people have said, it's a comedy. Basically, Demon King works at like McDonald's or something. Uh, <laughs> which actually sounds pretty funny. Uh, so again, as a comedy, I'm willing to give it a shot. And see what the humor's like. So that's another one. I'll give a three episode test to. Uh, what do we have next? Yahari Ori no station love come much teru. Yeah. The story revolves around an antisocial high school student named Hachiman Hakikigayo with a distorted view on life and no friends or girlfriend. When he sees his classmates talking excitedly about living their adolescent lives, he mutters, they're a bunch of liars. When he is asked about his future dreams, he responds, not working. A teacher gets Hachiman to join the volunteer service club, which happens to have the school's prettiest girl, Yukino Yuki Noshida. Her, her first and last name both start with Yuki. That That's, that's hilarious. Anyways, um... I actually have no idea what this show's about. I, I think it's one of those fan service romance kind of things where, like, the loser guy gets the hot chick for no real reason. But, um, I think I actually read in a, in, in a backstory, not backstory, but, like, a side information somewhere that the chick is actually, like, this major, like, sadist or masochist or something. So I think it's actually a comedy. Um, you can kind of see that in the title, Love Come. They kind of missed the D&Y part of comedy, but I believe that's what they're hinting at in the title. Uh, so again, as a comedy, I'm willing to to give it the couple of uh, the three episodes to see if it's my type of humor. If it turns out it's not even a comedy at all, then I can just drop it right then and there. <laughs> but well, who knows? Maybe it could actually be pretty good. Synopsis have been deceiving before. I mean, Toradora seemed like a generic synopsis, and that turned out to be fantastic, which I still need to do a video on. Eventually. Anyways, next show. Ginga Kikitai Majestic Prince. What? <laughs> The story falls humanity after it expanded its frontier into space in quest for resources. Advances in genetic engineering and research allow humans to adapt to the new frontier, leading to the advent of evolved children such as the protagonist Iziru. Iziru enrolls in an academy city called Garand Seer to fulfill his mission to protect humanity with robotic mecha. It, it, it's got the stupidest fucking title ever with Majestic Prince kind of just sticking out there. <laughs> but he's also, it's a, it's a mecha show, and, and I like giant robots. You know, I'll give it three episodes to see if it's not stupid. It could be stupid. I mean, hey, Star Driver was pretty stupid when you think about it, but that was a really entertaining show. That also had Ginga in it. Well, that was Ginga Bashonen, which was honestly even stupider than Majestic Prince, and it still turned out to be extremely entertaining. So I'm not going to pass it off just because its title is dumb. So I'll give it another three episode test, see how that goes. Don't really have any expectations. Uh, next is Devil Survivor 2, the animation. I'm not even going to read the synopses because I have a policy where if I have not played the game, I do not watch the show. Uh, in case that I end up in playing the game at a later time and I don't want the story ruined for me. So that's what I'm going to have to pass on. I actually broke that rule of Persona 4, but it's okay because I dropped that after like six episodes because it was really boring. <laughs> I think, I'm pretty sure the game's more entertaining than, than the anime was. The, the, the anime didn't really seem to have any direction. Like, I, I got really bored. 